In the last lecture, you learned about the mid-latitude cyclones, uh, these low pressure systems that can cause such variable weather across the US. Today, you will learn about thunderstorms, another type of low pressure system. So the stages of development of thunderstorms um, happen as a result of several things. The first stage is where there is a supply of warm air and moisture. By now you know that warm air rises. So if that warm air is carrying water vapor in it, that water vapor will rise to a certain point where it condenses. Remember that condensation is a warming process. So as long as that air inside the cloud remains warmer than the air outside the cloud, it will continue to rise. And as it rises, it's fueled, it's kept in motion, by this warm, this, um, these calories of energy that are being released in it. So each surge causes the air to rise higher and these updrafts and downdrafts will form. The updrafts are what keep the cloud getting ever higher. And as that warm air gets higher, it's gonna cool down. So uh, there will be an opposite downdraft. Then that air warms up causes convection, another convection cell to begin, and it rises, and then uh, there's another downdraft. So it's a, a thunderstorm is just a series of updrafts and downdrafts. Eventually, precipitation will form. There's usually gusty winds associated with the thunderstorm. There can be lightning associated with thunderstorm. There can be hail, very heavy precipitation. The cooling effect of precipitation marks the end of thunderstorm activity. So these are the areas across the globe and across the US where thunderstorms are quite common. And you see that in the US, central Florida, the average number of days per year with thunderstorms is 100. Florida has the record for number of thunderstorms each year and also for number of lightning deaths each year, as you would expect from that. If we look worldwide, you see in this little inset to the left over here that the, that's the average annual lightning flashes per square kilometer. So we're equating these lightning flashes with thunderstorms. And if you pay attention to where those areas are, think back to that intertropical convergence zone. These areas of thunderstorms are going to be where that intertropical convergence zone is most influential during the year. There are some areas that are always under the influence of the intertropical convergence zone, like here, um, that's the Congo in Africa, the Amazon basin, portions of Indonesia. So as we would expect, if we're getting thunderstorms after every afternoon where the ITCZ is, then of course those areas are gonna show up with uh, average annual lightning flashes on the high side. So lightning, what is lightning? We're fascinated by lightning. Lightning results from the separations of charges that builds up between the top and bottom of the cumulonimbus nimbus cloud. Negative charges are near the bottom of the cloud. They attract positive charges toward the ground surface, especially where there are tall objects like towers or uh, lightning rods on top of houses. Eventually, the electrical resistance in air can't keep the opposite charges apart. So air is not a good conductor. In order for lightning to occur, those charges have had to build up to an incredible strength. Then when they can't be kept apart any longer, there's a lightning strike. And this is why lightning can be so deadly because those charges have built up to such great power. So the negatively charged step leaders fork as they find different paths to the ground. Positive leaders will reach upward toward those step leaders. The discharge is followed by return strokes that move back toward the cloud. This Intense lightning heats up the air to about 28,000 degrees Celsius. That causes the air to expand violently at supersonic speed. That's what we hear as thunder. So anytime you hear thunder, 
you know there has been lightning. Lake Maracaibo in Venezuela averages 297 days per year with lightning activity. So what do you think it's under the influence of that intertropical convergence zone? And here are some pictures, opposite charges. Um, there's still a lot that we don't know about lightning, like how these charges uh, show up where they show up. Um, those are questions that that researchers in the lightning try to figure out, but we don't have a good answer for that yet. So there can be cloud to cloud lightning, there can be cloud to air lightning, there can be lightning within a cloud, there can be cloud to ground lightning, as this diagram shows. There's cloud to cloud lightning. And this is a little bit of everything. We see lightning taking place within the cloud. We see the cloud to air. We see cloud to ground, cloud to another cloud. So if you ever want to know how far away lightning is from you, after you see a flash of lightning, count the number of seconds until you hear the thunder. Use a stopwatch or you can say one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. For every five seconds, the storm is one mile away. Divide the, the number of seconds that you count by five to get the number of miles that lightning is away from you. Uh, so if you count to 10, then the lightning is gonna be two miles away from you. That's too close, that's way too close. So some helpful hints about lightning. If you're outside and you feel the air on your head or your neck standing on end, that's almost, it's almost too late at that point. Um, you need to get indoors immediately. That's probably gonna be impossible. Crouch on both feet in the lowest spot possible. Do not lie on the ground in a prone position. That just gives the lightning more surface area to move through. So you want as little of your body touching the ground as possible. Stay off of a landline phone because lightning can follow the, the phone line into, into the phone and from there into your body. Stay away from sinks or tubs. Don't wash dishes, don't be taking a shower, don't run water anywhere because the lightning can follow the plumbing system into your home. This is uh, how you're supposed to, this is the position that you're supposed to be in if lightning is imminent. Uh, and you can see that the person is crouching low to the ground. He has his hands over his ears to protect from the, the loud thunder. Um, don't touch any metal objects. If you have anything metal around you, throw it away. And you're supposed to touch the heels of your feet together. If electricity from the ground strike uh, enters through your feet, that will increase the chances of electricity going in one foot and out the other rather than into the rest of your body. So it's a lot to think about whenever, you know, you th you're uh, in imminent danger of lightning striking you. I don't know if I would be that, uh, um, that have all of my stuff together uh, to be able to think to do that. And that brings us to tornadoes, but I'm making this a short little video today, so we'll talk about tornadoes the next time. See you later.